Hey everyone, so this is the second part of my tutorial on model visualization in OpenSea's Python. In this video, I want to show you how we can visualize the outputs of a two-dimensional fiber section from your model. Uh, so if you look, this is kind of the output that we're going to be getting. Uh, you can So this is for the cantilever um, beam that I created when I was uh, looking at how to do pushovers. So we can kind of see we have these two uh, we have these two rebars that are really high in tensile stress, and we can also see we kind of have this parabolic distribution uh, of the concrete. So I think it's just really neat to be able to actually see like the the fibers in your model, their stresses and how they change uh, over time. You can see you can imagine right now we've probably passed the peak, so. Uh, this compression block is getting closer and closer to the rebars. Um, but yeah, so that's what we'll be taking a look at today. Quickly looking at the model that I'm going to be working with, we're going to be looking at a kind of stripped down version of the pushover analysis uh, that I had set up. So I'll do a quick review if you didn't go through that tutorial. Uh, we have some functions that will build the materials in our model. So the get, get sections will create the materials and the sections in our model. Uh, then we have the build model function that creates the geometry. I am calling a plot function here so we can uh, just take a look at what the model looks like. And you can see a very <laughs> unexciting model, this cantilever like this. Uh, and then the pushover analysis, this is where we actually run the pushover. And I am doing the low control with displacement, and then we're going to clear the model. So I will provide the code uh, in the description of the video. So if you want to follow along on that, uh, feel free to. And before we start, let's maybe just get at the, or let's label the nodes and the elements. So it's clear to everyone what's going on here. Uh, okay, perfect. Yeah, so you can see we have these three elements and these four nodes. Um, so yeah, let's start by uh, getting the outputs for, uh, we'll, we'll start, uh, say we want to visualize the fiber in this first section. Uh, so before I get into calling the visualization functions, I think something that might be useful for you to see is how we can just get uh, the outputs from any sort of fiber function. Uh, there's a few nuances with the way the fiber recorders work that uh, are good to note. So if you want to get the outputs for a fiber section, you can use the element recorder. Uh, or, or I guess the in this case we'll be using the element response command. But this element response command takes all of the same outputs. Uh, or excuse me, inputs that a recorder would. I think I spelled response wrong. Yeah, okay, let's try again. <laughs> response. Okay, hopefully I got it right. Um, so the first argument to this element response is going to be the element number. So we want element one, let's say. Then we want the quantity. So uh, we're going to be looking at the section. So we'll put the section command. And then we want specifically section one. Uh, this is where things get a little bit tricky. So you might think that if we want section one, uh, we should just you know use one. Uh, however, or rather, we need to instead uh, put in a string of one. So for every argument after this section right here, you're going to want to use the string values not uh, the, in, sorry, I should actually zoom in. I'm terrible, I always forget to zoom in every tutorial. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. moving on though. Uh, yeah, so everything after this section needs to be a string. So instead of having uh, it be the integer one, we'll provide it the string of one. And to get the information about the fiber, you can specify, like, uh, you can ask for a fiber and you can, like, give that fiber a location and give it a quantity. Uh, what might be easier is to use something called the fiber data tag. 
So this fiber data tag gives us all of the data for all the fibers in the section. Uh, all, it gives us a lot of data for all of the fibers in our section. Um, so we will assign this to a variable out and then we can take a look at that variable. We can see we have a huge list of a whole bunch of different quantities. So it's going to, for each fiber, we're going to have five outputs. Uh, first one is fiber Y. Yeah, I, okay, pretty sure first one's fiber Y. Second one, uh, I'm not sure what this is. It doesn't seem to change very much, and it doesn't change in our analysis. But then this one is local Z, and this is going to be stress, and this is going to be strain. So, yeah. That makes sense. I might have mixed up local Y and local Z, uh, but if I did, just get mad at me in the comments. <laughs> but just know, so if you are actually interested in getting the output of your fiber section, this fiber data command will give you a whole bunch of data for uh, the specified uh, section that you want. Okay, so now let's actually get into how to make the visualization. So this will actually be rather straightforward because of how uh, we've set up the model. We're going to first call, or we're first going to create an output database for our model. So let's do that right here. Uh, because of how we set up the functions, we'll create it between where we run the analysis and where we build the model. So we'll just uh, create the output database. Provide some comments for our sanity. So create database. Uh, we'll give it a model name. We'll say uh, cantilever, and we will give it a low case. We'll say it's pushover, and we look. Uh, yeah, pushover load control displacement. And then we can call the command to create the output database. So, uh, yeah, I've already imported the get rendering function. So I'll do opp dot create output database. Give it the model and the load case. And we don't care about any of these optional arguments for now. So we'll just run to confirm everything's working OK. Uh, we should see a output. If we go to the output folder, you should have this database now with uh, these appropriate files. Now, if we want to save uh, outputs from our fiber, so by default, the fiber inf information is not saved. Uh, this is because if you like think of like this output command there's like 500 different outputs uh, for each fiber and then if you have like a whole bunch of time steps really quickly uh, you're gonna end up with a lot of data so you should be a little careful with the outputs that you're asking for um, but if we want the output from a specific section we can go uh, and create uh, we can use the save fiber 2d command so you can see we want the model name the load case name and the element number uh, by default so we will get that model load case and then while we don't uh, while so here we need the element number we're also going to need the section number so if you're using a zero length section, uh, oh, actually, uh, so unfortunately, until OpenSeas is updated, uh, you're going to have a bug where it's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work for zero length sections. Um, so if you want to get the most recent uh, plotting I'll provide a link in the description of the video of where you can find that um, because sometimes it takes a, like sometimes open seas will lag behind. Um, yeah, okay, but so 
So yeah, if you're working with zero link sections, unfortunately the command you have won't work, but for me it will work, so <laughs> I'm sure that's great. Uh, and if, hopefully in the future when you're watching this video, uh, that will all be sorted out though. So uh, we also do want to give it a section number. And I will be inconsistent with my capitalization as always. Uh, we'll give it a little case. Um, so element number, section number, we'll look at element one and we'll look at section one in element one. So now we can run again. We should have no problems. Uh, and we can now issue our the plot commands. Um, so let's go about doing that. I'm going to turn off the analysis just because it's kind of annoying to have all this pop up. Uh, every time we don't need to run the analysis because we've already saved the data um, yeah okay so let's uh, so the first command I'll show you is going to be the plot by response 2d so plot fiber response 2d okay so the commands we need to give it are all up here uh, it's going to mirror the save fiber data and so i think we should be good here so if we run this we will see uh so by default this is showing you the last time step and it's showing you stress and the local axis is showing you is the local y axis so you could mess around with all of these if you want to see the local z axis uh in our example it won't be uh very exciting because um, it's just 2d and they're all at the same spot but we can mess around with some of this. So let's just run it. And uh, we can also see strain, which I imagine will not be very exciting either because uh, it's just going to be a linear distribution. So, um, but maybe for some reason you want to see uh, the linear distribution. So let's just take a look at that. Uh oh. <laughs> so. I probably want to give this argument uh, the keyword because it's a keyword argument. I think that will probably alleviate. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I was getting a little overzealous. We, I'm just going to turn the analysis back on. What what I'm pretty sure was going on is because we create this new output database. Uh, it's just killing all of our data. <laughs> so strand. Okay. Sorry about that. Now we're good. Yeah, let's take a look at our outputs actually. So we can see uh, the strain distribution and the stress di distribution at the final load step. Um, yeah, so th that's pretty nice to see. Is there anything else I want to show you with these plot fiber spots? Um, I think that's probably it for those guys. Uh, Next, I'll show you the animate fiber response. So if you want, instead of, uh, so here we can, you know, give it a specific time step that we want. Uh, if you want to instead see the response over all time, we will use the animate uh, fiber response instead. Uh, so get rid of those guys. Okay. Um, and we'll give it all number section number. And I'll comment out these above. Um, I also will just comment out this plot because we've seen it enough times. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so anything else that we want to give this before I run it? Oh, sorry. Um, so this command, we have a whole bunch of optional like keyword arguments. We can like choose when we start uh, the command, you can choose like the bounds, the frames per second. I won't get into any of this fancy stuff in this video, but there there are some, I think, pretty convenient features that we could use if we wanted to. But uh, let's just run it. So analysis runs and then, oh, I forgot to return the animation command. Uh, so. <laughs> excuse me, the animation object. Uh, so you actually, you need to have the object in it to run. 
I wrote the thing, so you think I would remember it, but uh, no, I really don't. So, all right, perfect. So <laughs> we can see, looking at the response, uh, exactly what we had in the beginning. So this nice little plot uh, where we can see the fibers, their locations, and their stress. So hopefully that helps you out. Um, I Right now, this module is exclusively for uh, two-dimensional um, fiber sections, but I have plans to extend it to three-dimensional fiber sections. Hopefully that will be coming out. Uh, I don't know. I won't give you a timeline, but that's definitely uh, pretty high on my list of things to do. So yeah, definitely look out for that, and hopefully this was helpful.